Welcome everyone to this Daily Declaration podcast. We're thrilled to have our special guest, Kiralee Smith, on joining us. And Kiralee is the Director and Spokeswoman for Binary, which is an Australian organisation defending the biblical and biological reality that there are only two sexes, male and female. Binary.org.au's website states that men and women are different, and we believe those differences are to be celebrated, appreciated, and utilised. Kiralee is also the 2023 Australian Mother of the Year, and she's also the editor of a soon-to-be-released book called Devastated, How Gender Ideology is Tearing Australian Families Apart. She's our guest today on the Daily Declaration podcast, so Kiralee, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It is an absolute pleasure to have you on the Daily Declaration podcast today. We, today, we want to discuss your latest book, Devastated. And this book contains first-hand accounts of families that have been devastated by the impact of gender ideology, this idea that we can change or transition our biological sex. The parents, or I understand that, it's often the parents uh, writing in these chapters, their stories and their heartbreak of losing their children to harmful gender ideology and their feelings of powerlessness as their kids have been groomed online and to the devastating impacts that this has had on their marriages and their children. These parents are sharing these stories because they hope to inspire others to trust their instincts and fight for their children before it's too late. So Kirillie, if you could tell us a little bit about how this book originated and, a little, and some of the background and motivation for why you've compiled this book. Yeah, thanks, Samuel. Look, this has been one of the most difficult projects I've ever been involved with. And um, it's come about because I'm contacted uh, daily, if not weekly, you know, by parents all around the country who have the most harrowing stories to tell me and uh, who don't feel like they have a voice in this country, that their children have um, come home. You know, some are pre the COVID era, but many, you know, through the lockdowns were addicted to screens. Uh, that was the only outlet um, they had. And through that started to question their gender identity. Now, all of these parents, like you or I would, uh, you know, went and saw uh, health for uh, sorry um, advice from health practitioners uh, perhaps from school counselors uh, and other things and they were utterly betrayed by these systems that are meant to help uh, govern them and direct them and guide them in life for the best for their children but what's actually happened is these children have been captured by this gender ideology that has absolutely devastated their families and so we have nine families that have been brave enough to trust us uh to steward their stories and it's um like I said, it's one of the most harrowing things I've ever been involved with. But these parents have shared how the health system, the political system and the education system have severely let them down and let their children down, that their children have been lied to and deceived. Um, many of them don't have relationship with their kids anymore uh, because of the direction that this has gone. And their stories are included in this book so that other Australian families, one, can feel like if they're going through it, they're not alone. To, uh, you know, that they can glean some wisdom and insight into how to protect their children from this insidious ideology. So I'm happy to keep talking unless you want to interject and ask a question, but that's so much I can say about it. Yeah, sure. It's, uh, it's very tragic to hear because many of those families who are interviewed in the book or contain their stories in the book, when they're going to, you know, for professional help, for psychologists or school um, counsellors or medical professionals, thinking that they're going to be helped in what they, you know, are expecting, uh, you know, is not gender affirming care, but in many cases, that's what they got. And as your book says, the results were devastating. Yeah. And look, you know, I'd say at least half the families are Christian families. Um, many of the families are, you know, just ordinary Australians like you and I. They're not, you know, it's not necessarily from broken homes or major trauma or anything like that. They're just families doing their best to get along and uh, children who 
you know, they're across the spectrum, whether it's they're on the spectrum or they have autism or they've had some, you know, form of trauma in their past. Um, but they are just ordinary families like yours and mine that, uh, you know, just want the best for their children. And they have gone along to health professionals in many cases. And the health professionals have turned on them by saying, if you don't affirm that child's gender identity, uh, we will have them removed. And in some cases that has happened, uh, or they will just um, call them bigots, transphobes, um, and really make the parent question their love, their capacity, their capability in parenting their own child. And these families have felt so alone. They've been isolated in the whole process. Uh, they've done the best they can to say and encourage their child, uh, you know, to say that you are perfect and beautiful and wonderful exactly how you are. You don't need to identify something else. Many of the families have even um, entertained and said, look, you can change your appearance in terms of cut your hair, wear a different, you know, different clothing. Uh, I want you to feel comfortable. You don't have to fit the stereotypes, but then they've been sucked in by the system that says, no, you need to go on puberty blockers or cross-sex hormones. And uh, these children's lives have been utterly destroyed because those treatments are irreversible. They do catastrophic harm. And, uh, you know, some of the accounts in this book about females going through male pattern baldness, uh, their wombs have atrophied, they're now infertile, they've had breast cut off, they can't breastfeed their children once they become adults. It, it's just unbelievable. Uh, and that's just scratching the surface of those health problems. Mm. That is some um, very deep, but very important content that's included. I think probably majority, well, I know the majority of Australians are not on board with what's called gender affirming care, but probably the majority of Australians don't really know the depth of harm that's caused by this. And I think um, maybe you can speak to the fact that you've got ordinary families telling their stories. So it's not just, uh, you know, a medical professional as important as that might be talking about the harms of this kind of ideology, but everyday ordinary families is very relatable to everyone in Australia. Well, it's exceedingly relatable, unfortunately. And um, like we, we do have two chapters written by Professor Diana Kenny, who works in this area and she brings invaluable advice and insight into this area. But the nine families that have shared, uh, you know, um, they, they're just, you know, they work, they send their kids to school, they go to church, they're actively involved in the community. Many of the children were involved in the arts in particular. Uh, there's, you know, there's one account where it's siblings, there's another account where it's a husband and the daughter, it's another account where there's a parent and a four-year-old child. You know, these are, these are things that it's very evident as you read the book, there's common themes. And one is uh, the internet, you know, plays a really big part in this and it captures people who are feeling isolated or out of sorts. Uh, they're being told uh, lies and being deceived into different pathways. Uh, we also see that schools, there are activists in schools who really uh, come alongside and I will say almost groom the children into believing that they can change their sex, which they can't do, uh, and that they'll be happier if uh, they go down these affirmation pathways and are separated from the parents and the siblings who love them and care for them so deeply. So some of the parents have had success in holding off that sort of activism. Um, other parents have no relationship and contact whatsoever with their children now. So it spreads the whole uh, the whole gamut when it comes to that, but it's very hard to read. And like you said, they're just ordinary families who have gone through very extraordinary circumstances. Mm, I both want to read it and not want to read it at the same time. Um, but it's not yeah, vital, long, important really reading. reading. Yeah. yeah. It is important reading. And I want to say, you know, like some of these families have thanked me profusely for putting this project together. But, you know, what really stands out to me is that I can close the book. I can put it down. I can walk away from it. But these families have to live this reality every single day. And the uh, cost it is on their mental health, on their own physical health is beyond our comprehension. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Who's the book for? Or who do you hope will read it? Or who most needs to read the book? Look, that's a great question. And there's a couple of uh, different 
answers to that. One is we really want politicians to read it and understand because they have created laws in this country that have made it so difficult for families to protect their children uh, in terms of gender affirmation care, in terms of um, threatening um, health practitioners and parents and pastors and priests and other people uh, from opposing this ideology. So we really need politicians to get on board to um, read this book and to understand what's at stake because they hear a lot from from the radical activists and the lobby groups, but they don't hear enough from everyday Australians and they don't understand uh, the impact and just how devastating it really is for these families. And, uh, you know, for instance, uh, I had an email just this morning from someone who had written to their MP and said, look, this, this is really an important topic we need to discuss. And the MP responded and said, oh, look, I just care that these people are going to kill themselves if they don't get the affirmation treatment. The actual fact of that is, and I gave her the, the links to the studies, is that the suicide rates increase by 17 to 20% after people attempt to transition because they realise you can't actually change your sex. Costumes, drugs, surgery do not change your biological reality. They are a mask. They are a superficial attempt to identify as the opposite sex, and they don't address the underlying issues like the autism, the trauma, or the depression that has led to that confusion in the first place. So really, our politicians need a great deal of education. And secondly, it's for other families going through similar circumstances. I really want them to feel when they read this book that they're not alone, that they um, can reach out, that there are support groups and there are ways to get through this. And thirdly, is just the general public need to read it, to understand, to have compassion, to be informed and to be activated. Uh, someone I know uh, read an advanced copy and, uh, you know, she had a little bit of an idea of what this was about, but Wow. As she read it, she was outraged and motivated and activated. She uh, older, uh, wants 24 copies straight up, has people in uh, positions of influence that she wants to give them to because she knows that these stories can make a difference. And, you know, for you and I as Christians, we know that our testimony is very powerful and that's what this book is. It's testimony and you can't argue with someone's testimony. So I think that uh, a lot of people should read it and hopefully we'll start to see the tide turn here in Australia. Mm, sure. And so the nine families, is it written from parents' perspective, the, the nine different chapters? It is, yes. All of them are the parents or the wife, uh, the wife's um, perspective in terms of the, the one account of a husband who has transitioned and, um, and then his adult daughter did as well. Um, so, yeah, all, all parental perspectives, and we think that's really important because they're the voices that are not being heard. Uh, you know, I think there's a real... Um, need for a detransitioner account as well. Uh, but at this point, it's it's the parents who are explaining, again, like I said, how the political, the health and the education systems have utterly failed them. Mm. And I, I imagine that even though it's from a parent's perspective, but you've got nine different families, so they're all going to be a very unique context. They're going to be a very unique story. And although there'll be similar themes, um, their circumstances will vary quite considerably. And each chapter will bring a very different angle on this topic. A hundred percent. And they're from all over Australia, from Western Australia, Queensland, uh, New South Wales, all over. And they are experiences and accounts, the ages of the children or the people um, who are caught up in this all differ. Uh, their approaches to it all differ. Uh, but there are common threads, as I said, through each story. But each one has written the story on their own. We have very lightly edited it only to make them uh, easy to read or, you know, correct grammar or whatever it is. But uh, it really is their own voice. So each chapter you read, it's not like reading, you know, from the same author because it is authored uh, by nine different families. Um, I've written some bookend chapters and Professor Diana Kenny has added a professional view as well. So um, it's a very interesting read. It's not a long book. It's only 160 pages, uh, but a very important read. Yeah. And I, I really like the cover, how you've got a few different families and stick figures, but then you scrubbed out um, one of the children. Um, it's a very powerful imagery, very sad yes. imagery, but uh, a very simple imagery, but it gets the point across really well. It certainly does. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask also about uh, Professor Diana Kenny. So you've mentioned her. For those people who don't know who she is, can you just give us a little bit about her background and 
her contribution to the book as a professional psychologist um, and also university professor? Yeah, look, she has had a very interesting and varied background in um, music therapies in particular, but over recent years, she's been one of the few very lone voices in the medical practitioner space who has really questioned the affirmation therapy and has really identified that uh, there is a need to look at the psychiatric issues that cause children in particular and adolescents, she specialises in the adolescents, um, to look at these things. So, you know, she's dealt with uh, young people who have had eating disorders or depression and things in the past, and now they're presenting with gender incongruence. And so Professor Diana Kenny um, has used her skills, used her education and her academic ability to research these. And she um, is very active in this space. She speaks out a lot. She writes papers. Uh, she does interviews and she graciously agreed to write these chapters for our books just to give um, parents a little bit of an insight into how to find appropriate practitioners, what questions to ask them, what issues to look for, and how to best move forward if your family is facing this. And uh, it's very easy to read, very clear um, advice. And uh, yeah, she's just a really brave person in this space. She's been targeted uh, by activists herself. And, uh, you know, she refuses to back down. So I have great admiration for her. Yeah, fantastic. That sounds like incredibly practical and helpful advice as well to families um, who may be facing this either now or in the future. Um, so great preparation for that. The launch of Devastated is happening on the 28th of November. It's not very far away from when we're recording this. Can you tell us where you'll be launching it and why you are launching it there? Yeah, we're um, launching it at Parliament House in Canberra and uh, Senator Alex Antic is sponsoring it for us. It is a, a private invitation only event, but if any of your listeners or viewers would like an invitation, they can contact me at Binary uh, for that. Uh, and that's mainly to protect the vulnerable families who are involved. They're not all coming, but some of them are. And I really don't want it to turn into a circus where we have protesters and uh you know, cruel people who want to tear them down. They've been through enough and I, they deserve our respect. They deserve our protection. And so Senator Alex Antic has been very strong on this. He's put forward a bill in Parliament uh, that d hasn't gotten up at this stage, but to really investigate gender, uh, gender clinic practices and uh, what's going on in our country. Uh, and he has been a really strong, powerful voice and advocate for these families and so he has agreed to um, launch this book with me, which is really exciting. We have other senators who are very uh, hoping to come along. Um, Senator Claire Chandler has been a brilliant uh, woman for advocating for women's sports and spaces in particular. Uh, Malcolm Roberts, um, Pauline Hanson. Uh, Senator Ralph Babette and others um, are hoping to come along as well and have been personally invited. So having it in Parliament House means that uh, even though they're very busy with estimates and parliamentary duties, that they can pop in in the two-hour window, meet the families, offer their support and uh, hopefully pick up a book or two and, uh, and read it and share it around. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so great to have Senator Alex Antic sponsor the opening of it, the release of it. And uh, we really pray that it's a fantastic uh, release and uh, uh, a picture of what's to come as far as the impact of the book around Australia and around the world. Getting to this point, you've had a fundraising campaign uh, to cover the costs of production and printing. Uh, how's that gone? Where are you up to? And what's the way forward here? And do you still need support in fundraising to help this get over the line? Thank you. Uh, look, we've been overwhelmed. It's been a magnificent response so far, and we've raised enough money to make sure that all of those federal politicians and many of the state politicians will get a copy uh, that's already been funded. Uh, people who have donated will also uh, get a copy, and then there'll be um, other copies available on the website uh, for a donation. Um, I think it's around $35, uh, the donation or above. Um, that detail will come out next week around the launch. Um, so if you keep an eye on binary.org.au, you'll see that. Um, we want to 
it really encourage people to get their own copies, but also to get a copy or to gift those copies to people they know that need it, whether it's people in child protection, health practitioners, uh, politicians, council, whatever it is, um, the more people that read this book, the better. So, uh, and if people want to buy multiple copies, they can also contact me and we'll work something out because it's, it's very important to us that the right people get to read this book. And so it's not about ma- making money or profit. Uh, this is about getting the book as wide well an audience as possible. Mm, Absolutely. And maybe to finish off, um, how do you see this book shaping the conversation around gender ideology in the next few months and in the next few years? What kind of role do you think it will play? I think it will play an extremely important role. Uh, Some of these parents are prepared to talk publicly and to speak out. So I'm hoping that their voice will be heard, uh, you know, wide and far. Uh, I think that politicians won't be able to ignore the evidence that's in this book, that something needs to be done and changed. Uh, I think that um, more Australians will wake up and really understand the devastating impact that this ideology has and that uh, the whole Be Kind Brigade haven't been kind because they've destroyed the lives of young people uh, with an ideology with treatments that are irreversible and catastrophic. And so this book will be very important. And as far as I know, it's the first Australian focused book on Australian stories. And so, uh, it's, it's pretty, um, you know, it's really impacted our nation in a huge way. And where other countries like the UK have had the CAS review, where they've rolled back, they've stopped, they've banned the use of puberty blockers unless it's a clinical trial on young people, whereas our country seems to be just, you know, steamrolling ahead, uh, it's going to cause some serious reflection and I hope some uh, serious changes in our culture and in our legislation around this issue. Yeah, we certainly hope so. Well, Kiralee, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for informing our listeners about the book. Uh, For our listeners, you'll find how to get the book in the description below um, and the links to Binary's website where you can order Devastated. And it releases on the 28th of November. Uh, We'll keep you updated and informed. But Kiralee, thank you so much for your time. And we just... uh, continue to bless the work, important and vital work that you're doing uh, around this issue. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. It's good stuff. And for the work you guys do, it's just amazing.